to Soul Perspectives. I'm Kip. And I'm Evan. And today we're going to talk about what it means to move from rebel to seeker. We talk a lot about conscious evolution, collective evolution as a media outlet who we uh, respect and appreciate what they're doing and get a little information from them. We um, have done a show on conscious evolution, i.e. the title of Barbara Marx Hubbard's 1998 book. And so this theme recurring of evolution of our consciousness, uh, being ready and open and willing to give up who we thought we were, to take a closer look inside our heart without distraction, without impediment, and to live a higher truth and a higher value system and one that more serves us, supports our thriving, and helps us unite and nurture our human family. And that's really what this conscious evolution thing is all about, right? Absolutely. And, and you know, what it really is, is when we come into this world as children, we're blank slates. Then all the programming starts getting built in and we go through all these different stages to finally undo that programming. And some of these stages are moving from that rebel anger, still based in fear a little bit. Then you start to wake up to love. Then you start to get back to that more childhood innocence where you're looking at yourself and asking more questions. And this is all a matter of where are we on that journey, on that continuum of awareness, enlightenment, whatever you want to call it or whatever you're working towards. But for me, it feels like there's a certain responsibility that comes with awakening. It's like, now that I'm aware, then I have this choice to make. If we're unaware and we're completely asleep and program and just operating from the mindset that was put in there for us to operate, and we're not aware that we're even running one, let alone the harm that it's causing us to do to ourselves and our tribe and our fa human family. But once we awaken to that and we recognize that we're not living a high-value system, we're not uh, living in accordance with health and vitality and wellness, and we're not living in a way that allows us to support and nurture one another. And so once we awaken to that, now there's, there's a, a challenge for us, Absolutely. and there's a responsibility for us to rise above those challenges, to heal actively, consciously, heal all the trauma that's been imposed upon us, that's been there for the totality of our lives, that we now have this opportunity and this calling. Let's say we've been called. If we're aware, that's your calling. Now it's time to live with purpose. And we're grappling with that ourselves and we are working and working to move forward and to make inroads and evolve our consciousness so we can evolve our lifestyle, so we can evolve our culture, so we can evolve our entire species to a higher form, a higher way of living that is following our biological imperative to survive. <laughs> Let's just start there. And, and, I, and I think you did a really good job of defining why we first, when we first awaken, we are in that rebel state. It's like, what the hell am I doing? Why, why is this going on? Why have I been programmed to this story? Why is everything so messed up? I don't know anything other than to fight back. I've got to fight back. It's somebody else's fault. It's somebody else's fault. I've got to rage against whatever made me this way, whatever took away my life. I, I'm so angry. That you did a really good job of capturing that, of how you know all of our the things that are most important to us, our health, our vitality, our connection to life itself, all of those things are programmed out of us. So it's no wonder we have to go through the rebel process before we can move out of it. It's all we know to begin with. That too. Um, and it hurts to find yeah, out that everything absolutely. you were taught was questionable and every, every cultural norm that was imposed upon you was not necessarily in your best interest. So there's a beautiful book here by Frederick Tim. It's called Field Guide to a New Species, A New Sustainable Way to Be Human. It was a book that I felt was one of the five most important books for any human anywhere to read. And when I got turned on to audiobooks and started listening to the books where I could hear them, absorb them, play them over and over, um, do it while I was listening to them while I was doing something else so I didn't need the devoted time of just sitting there reading the book and nothing else. Um, I realized that three out of five of what I felt were the most important books were not available as an audiobook. So I took it upon myself, um, being a, a trained actor, a voice actor, I went to Frederick Tim and I said, I would love to see an audiobook 
come into being for your incredibly powerful, important work. And I would love to do it for you. And here are some samples. And he agreed. And I have narrated Field Guide to a New Species. It's available on all the platforms it's where audio books are available. And um, it's, it's powerful, beautiful material here. And this is where the concept of rebels and seekers even comes from, is this book. And what I want to read here is a, a call to action for us all. Some people are just born different. They are born with more capacity, more rebellion, more awareness, more insight. They were born with more light and more fight to break away from the deadness of their families and the norm and to struggle out of the deadness of the unresolved traumas within them. As I see it, humanity's future rests upon the shoulders of these people. This book is addressed to them to bolster their courage as they evolve into a new way. And that is certainly, if nothing else, what we are here to do Absolutely. as well. Bolster and support the courage of you change makers, you light workers, you indigo children, you healers, you future seekers. We are here to support you and encourage you and educate and inform you with the best wisdom that we've run across. You know, and I see so many young people today, and my heart goes out for them because they, they're in that rebel state. And they, but they're looking at the system, and they're saying, I'm going to change the system. I'm going to become a member of Congress. I'm going to start some sort of anti-gun movement or this movement or that movement. Who knows? And I, want, I just want to hug them and say, it's not how we're going to get there. Get why you're doing it. Understand that you're in that rebel state, and you feel that you need to fight against this, but you're only continuing the system forward you're continuing the system of war and separation forward as long as we stay in that rebel state and we're continuing to point fingers at the other we're not going to be able to move to that place of seeker so it's so important for us to offer these young people another place to come to a way that they can be feel empowered without the fight and understand what it means to truly move into that love that i know that's where they want to move to and take a look at what you're doing and why and recognize that if what you're doing directly relates to that thing that you're admonishing, you're giving it your energy, you're giving it your attention, and you're focusing the attention on the thing. And it feels really valid and valuable and it feels important to bring attention to these things that are bad so we can help other people wake up and be aware. But then who's left to be building the new? If, if we all need to be protesting and raising awareness about the bad stuff that we think is harmful, then who's left to create the thing that is supporting of our thriving and not no longer harmful? And so um, let me give a little bit of uh, foundation for this from the book. Um, Mr. Tim talks about this new evolved human and what we evolve into. And whereas Barbara Marks Hubbard in her book, Conscious Evolution, called it Homo Universalis, and the, the prefix homo uh, is a Greek, actually means same. Oftentimes we think of it as man, homo sapien, thinking man, but it's actually not man, it means same, so thinking the same. And so homo universalis is that we are universally the same. Fred Tim uses a different term that he came up with, and his is homo veritas, same truth. And I love that so much because if we can get beneath the cultural polarity, then we can get to that deeper truth that we share in common, our commonality. And I'm going to let you introduce at this point this, this um, concept of stopping so we even find a way to discover that. And then I'll go through um, the four stages of evolution that Tim talks about in his book. And so we can then narrow down that focus to what does it mean to shift from the rebel to the seeker? You know, part of the challenge that we're all facing right now is we're going a million miles an hour in the wrong direction. And it's very hard not to feel like you want to fight everywhere all the time for a whole variety of reasons. One, you feel constantly bombarded by things that, are, that people are telling you you're enemy. You're being told everything you've ever known in your life was a complete lie. Wow, that's a huge pill to swallow. Now just suck it up and give up everything that you've been taught to love. Everything. You're, leave all your entire comfort zone behind. Mm. No qu that, that's it's a lot to ask. It's too much. <laughs> I, I think just from a pure physics standpoint, you can't be going, again, a million miles in the wrong direction and ask everyone to 
change direction. We have to stop. We have to stop so one, we can hear ourselves think, so we can feel our connection again to all that is, and also so we can look around and stop and assess what are we doing and why? Where are we going? It's not that there's anything inherently bad or wrong with our technologies or anything there that, that we've invented or created. It's just we're using the tools in, in a way that's not, not creative but destructive. And so in order for us to see a way towards a workable, sustainable tomorrow, let's set our goal, let's set our intention to say, okay, we want to thrive. What will it take for us to do that? We're never going to be able to do that if we're continuing to do the things that are, that are leading us to our own extinction right now. Right, so literally in stopping, we assess, what am I doing? We assess, what is my value system? What value system is what I'm doing serving? And what would be my highest value system? What would be my choice? If I could start over for myself, my life as a responsible adult human being, what would I want my value system to be? What would I want to pursue? Wouldn't it be health and vitality? Wouldn't it be nurturing and caring for others around me? Wouldn't it be creating strong communities and social groups so I feel supported and I'm able to give of them and of myself to them and be productive and contribute to something bigger than myself? That's what, uh, sign me up. I mean, I, those are some of the values I, I think I would choose to pursue if I could create them from scratch. And so I think that opportunity is there when we stop and really assess what are we doing, what value system are we serving, and what value system would we choose to be serving if we could really listen to our hearts after stopping, and then we get to design our lives. This is our life story to write. Let's make it a love story. We get to decide what can I be doing then? What can I choose to do with my time, my attention, my energy, my brain power that will then serve that value system that I myself, out of choice, got to proclaim as my guiding light? Yeah, and, and the problem with as long as we're still in rebel, you're really not awake yet. Your eyes aren't wide open. You're still in fight. You are still staring at the cave wall, Plato's cave, and you're, but now you, you're awake and you realize that there's something wrong, and you, but you're still fighting the shadows on the wall. It's not until you become a seeker that you've turned around and realized, I can walk out of the cave. I can be anything I want. Now you're awake, but it requires letting go of all things, your fear programming. We're addicted to our fear. We're addicted to the power it makes us feel sometimes. I know just when I think about my own journey from rebel to seeker, that was a tough transition to go through because there is a power in the wanting to fight. There is that, I gotta punch something. And that's how, especially as men were brought up, I, I gotta fight back. All of a sudden, I have to reassess what it means to be powerful. I have to find the true power in myself, my gentleness and kindness in loving one another rather than fighting against. That's a big switch in, uh, shift in consciousness. It's a big shift in MO. It's a big shift in energy. It's a big yeah. shift in how we spend our time, where we put our attention. You know, we're looking for things that confirm our biases. And so the videos that we look for, therefore the ones that get suggested to us, they fit a narrative that we're pursuing because we're looking for confirmation. We want to feel right and that's all ego. And this is about shattering ego and getting into heart that has the beginner's mind, that is wide open, that is ready for that next great thing that's going to sound more logical, make more sense, more consistent with thriving. So to break it down, Fred Tim in his book, Field Guide to a New Species, talks about the four stages of conscious evolution and uh, the initial stage where we are all sitting is the homo sapien, the, the typical common man, the, the um, unaware, programmed, self-destructive, polarized from his tribe, bought into an us versus them mentality, found every scapegoat necessary to cope with his guilt over the way he or she is living and stuck in a rut and participating in our collective demise. That's homo sapien, you know, and then at the other end of the spectrum is that homo veritas, same truth, someone who recognizes what their heart is, is telling them, is able to freely listen, live very high truths Absolute unapologetically acceptance. because there, there's no need to answer to anyone else but their, their higher self. There's no need to conform to any social norms because they're not bogged down by what other people think. And they're aware that there is no other at that point, that yeah. the other is them. Exactly. That's homo veritas. That's, that's being trauma-free yeah. and ruled by truth. But Absolute we're here to, to talk about the, the rebels and the seekers. Yeah. Um, so let, let me read both. And these are very quick as well. Uh, coming from the man who brought you the narration of the audiobook itself. <clears throat> A trailer for the audiobook. <laughs> the second type of human, rebels, is transitional. 
they have begun the process of evolving from trauma to truth and live in the discomfort of knowing too much to fit in, yet never enough to grow in a concerted way. They rebel against the strictures of conventional society and the conformity of their unconscious families. They are reactive to the norm, but not proactive in finding something new. As their focus is on those against whom they rebel, they do not investigate their inner world, which also leaves them fragmented within. They are social outcasts, but fail to use this to make a decided forward leap. And that's what we're talking about, rebels. And, and to the seekers, what I'd like to say, I'd like to say to seekers, you're, you're out there, and I know that there's a lot right now, especially of unease, feeling, God, is this ever going to change? Are we, are, are, am I wasting my time even on some level? You're not. We're just all these disparate dots out here. We need now to come together and support one another. And to the rebels, I want to say, we're here to support you. We're here to support you because we've been you. We understand what you're going through. We understand the trauma that you've experienced. We've faced it ourselves. Mm. We're continuing to face it and dig deeper. But now's the time for us to really, as you point out all the time, we're not going to be able to do this without 100% supporting one another. And we can't look at our perceived enemies Fighting against them isn't going to get us to where we want uh, to be, and we're also never going to be able to touch their hearts and minds as long as we're fighting against them. It's up to us to show the better way, not just talk about it, but come together and actually start to build a new way forward and mm -hmm. design a new way forward, yeah. which we are. And, and speaking of that coming together, um, we use the context of conscious evolution, hashtag that, and the love paradigm as that beautiful world that we get to create whatever it doesn't have to be this fantasy magical unicorn mm -hmm. utopia that doesn't exist don't be discouraged by that because it's just the world we want to create and that's up to us to determine so we're here to talk about seekers and how to make that transition and how we've been rebels ourselves we know all about it and it's uh, it's beautiful up here in seeker land and we're inviting you to come aboard and come join us and the third type of human is seekers seekers have mutated beyond reactive rebellion into proactive self-investigation they begin to look within to resolve their legacy of childhood trauma yep. and release their magnificence yep. although still somewhat fragmented they are becoming integrated within they focus their energy on healing and becoming the people they were meant to be. Seekers begin the process of evolving into the fourth type of human, homo veritas. So that's what we're talking about is going from that state of being awakened to, oh my God, we're living, we're living against our biological imperative to survive. We've been fooled and sold a bill of goods by a powerful system with its claws in everything in our culture, and they've infected our minds. Just look at the century of the self and Edward Bernays and how business tapped into psychology to manipulate us into buy, 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 buy. And we, next thing you know, we've got the world we have now. And so this is our opportunity to awaken to our awakened state and our rebellious state so we can then move to that next level of just seeking. Once we get enough catharsis, once we have enough support around us, we can rise above that fist shaking that we all felt when we realized the sham, when we peered behind the curtain and realized the sham, we were pissed and rightly so. Our relatives are dying, they're sick and they're suffering all over the place from the, the close ones that we can see to the far off ones we'll never meet. We know they're suffering. We feel it in our hearts and we want better. It's in our hearts to want better. We are ultra social and interdependent. But to get there is, can be a process. I'm not saying it has to be. Maybe people wake up in their home of Veritas one day. I don't know. But I, I see where Mr. Tim is getting in the book and I feel it and have experienced it myself and witnessed it in many, many, many people I know, that rebellious state. And we get stuck in the rebellion because we think we're justified and we think we're, we're self-righteous and we're doing the right thing by exposing the ills of the world. There is life beyond that, and this is where we are inviting you to join us, join the Soul Tribe, as we go beyond just the anger and protest and the fight against how bad things are. And, and anger, protest, and also the feeling bad. Yeah. I see people posting stuff all over. They're so caught in their melancholy and their depression of just feeling bad at the animals we're destroying and the 
innocent children that are dying. So that's as destructive as the fight. And one thing you mentioned, and, and we talked about it, I didn't hear it uh, when you read it this time. Um, yes, we do, we do this inner seeking, we go back to childhood trauma. But one thing we talked about before the show was, then you also recognize that that childhood trauma is the same trauma that your parents are carrying forward and their parents and their parents. And I think it's important to point that out so that we have empathy and compassion for all those who came before us who struggled and trying to figure out this craziness too, because we have to allow them to heal and we have to recognize they weren't our villains. If, if, we, if we stop with just our family, then we go, oh, it's my family that's the problem. No, your, your parents are just as much of a victim as you've been of the system. Well, let's go back to the, to the very beginning in the introduction here and just cover this because it's, it's so succinct here. Um, you know, and, and he's talking about when humanity, the most conscious and evolved species ever to inhabit the planet, devours and destroys its host, the Earth, yep. we must stop and question this act of suicide. Why do we court our own extinction? And here he says, That's the it. answer is simple but hard to face. Our parents failed us, hurt us and traumatized us, replicating how their parents That's and it. ancestors failed, hurt, and traumatized them. This is the secret to life, so difficult for us to face as individuals and collectively as a species. Our whole species suffers from trauma, and many would rather die than admit this tragic legacy. So we're here to open this wide open. Let's admit it. We're living suicidal lifestyles based on culture imposed upon us from generations of traumatized individuals themselves. And we were all made to feel guilty and lesser and that our voice shouldn't be heard and that our uniqueness is not valid or valuable or will get us where we need to go, where they prescribe we need to go in life. And that is not the case. You are unique and special and beautiful and meant to be exactly who you have the potential to be. And this is our opportunity to support you and invite you to join us and invite you to consciously evolve and that there are people right here waiting for you to help collaborate on the next thing. And this is our world to build and our life story to write. And if we rely on governments and corporations to all of a sudden wake up and do the right thing and impose regulations upon themselves and the free market will just fix everything, then we'll leave you there to pursue that and we'll be up here creating the new. And um, the best solution that we've found, the best, most comprehensive plan, concepts with the value system to go along with it is the Venus Project. You can find more about that on our website, souldocumentary.love. You can find links to the audiobook narration for Field Guide to a New Species on our website, souldocumentary.love. You can learn more about conscious evolution and the love paradigm and read, download, and share our love paradigm manifesto on our website, souldocumentary.love. You can sign up on our mailing list. We would love to welcome you into the Soul Tribe comment on this video, share it with your friends and on your feeds, and recognize that this is our time, this is our opportunity to change everything. Be the change you want to see in the world, be the love you want to see in the world, and help us pursue more nurturing, sustainable ways of living so we can thrive together as the human family, as interdependent as we and before I give my uh, wrap up here, I do want to point out something. The system that we've been programmed into, the system that is founded in institutionalized fear, it's powerful. It's easy to manipulate and control people with fear. It's an easy addiction to get caught up in. Oh, God, I got a reaction there. Fear screams. It's loud. It feels powerful. This is the reprogramming that we have to go through as we move from rebel to seeker. Love is a far more powerful energy, but it's subtle. It speaks to you in silence. It speaks to you in the calm. It speaks to you in the peace. It speaks to you through your heart. Stop listening to the cacophony in your head. Start listening to the silence of your heart. This is one of the major shifts that happens as you move from rebel to seeker. Listen to this guy. He really knows this stuff. <laughs> He's the full-on yin of this <laughs> yin-yang. So uh, beautifully put, and thank you, brother. And um, again, we are here to inspire you, to inform you, to share what we have with you, to help us all evolve for all of our sake and for those who will never hear this or see this but who will just benefit from recognizing that 
the blanket of oppression on the will of the people has been lifted and we are able to emerge a thriving, intelligent being as we have the capacity to be but might not currently be practicing fully. So come to souldocumentary.love and crawl under our blanket. We will love you and we want you to love us back. And uh, this has been Soul Perspectives and we are here to give you our perspective on things and remind you that everything any of us takes in, it's always oh. all oh. a matter of oh. perception. Thanks for joining us and we'll see you next week. Two, three, four. It's all a matter of perception. Where we stand in space and time. There is no you on me that I can see.